Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Siva. I'm an anesthesiologist working in Toronto, Canada. Over the past 10 months, along with working in the operating room, I've been part of my hospital's COVID-19 intubation team. This role involves assessment and management of patients arriving to the hospital with COVID-19 respiratory failure. As you've probably seen on the news, one of the key steps is called intubation. This involves giving the patient a general anesthetic, putting them to sleep, and then using specialized equipment to insert a breathing tube into their lungs. As you can imagine, this is a very invasive procedure where the patient may suddenly cough and spread viral particles into the air, and thereby uh, spreading infection to individuals in the surrounding area. Although we've been wearing PPE uh, during these intubation procedures, our anxiety levels still remain pretty high, uh, given that there's always a potential for us to get exposed despite wearing all our protective equipment. Now, on a positive note, I just received my second dose of my COVID-19 vaccine today. The process was quite easy. I received my first dose three weeks ago. The only side effect I had was uh, mu a muscle pain on the arm that I was injected in. It was snowing in Toronto today. I made sure I arrived early to uh, the vaccine center. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward process. After I got the vaccine, I had to wait for about 15 minutes just to make sure I didn't have any adverse reactions and then I was on my way home. Today, after receiving my second dose, the only side effect I've had so far is pain at the injection site. So the most common side effects in general include pain at the injection site, fatigue, muscle pain, joint pain, and some people have also described uh, getting a fever. These side effects are usually more common after the second dose. This is especially so in younger individuals who are able to mount a stronger immune response. So given that these side effects occur, it doesn't mean that this vaccine is unsafe. It just means that your immune system is kicking into high gear. There's recently been a lot of talk about these vaccines on the news, and a lot of this information can get quite confusing. So here's a short rundown of what you need to know. In North America, the two vaccines that are currently approved are being produced by Moderna and Pfizer. In Asia and Europe, the vaccine that's being currently rolled out is produced by AstraZeneca. If you're fortunate enough to be getting the vaccine at this early stage, you probably won't have a choice of which vaccine you get. Today, I got the Pfizer vaccine. All three vaccines have been shown to be highly effective. Moderna reported that its vaccine candidate was 94.5% effective. Similarly, the Pfizer vaccine candidate was shown to be 95% effective in preventing infection. The AstraZeneca vaccine was shown to be between 60 to 90% effective depending on its initial dosage. So how do vaccines work? In general, vaccines train the immune system to recognize the disease-causing part of the virus. Traditional vaccines such as the measles vaccine either contain weakened virus or signature proteins of the virus. COVID-19 virus is studded with proteins on its surface which it uses to enter human cells. These so-called spike proteins are unique to this virus and make it an ideal signature protein to base potential vaccine candidates around. So what makes the current lineup of COVID-19 vaccines different from traditional vaccines? The COVID-19 vaccine from Moderna and Pfizer are what are known as messenger RNA or mRNA vaccines. The vaccine candidate from AstraZeneca is a DNA vaccine. We'll start with mRNA vaccines. For all mRNA vaccines, rather than having the actual viral signature protein injected, a person receives an injection of genetic material, the mRNA, that encodes the viral signature protein. mRNA is essentially the blueprint for the human body to build a specific protein. When these genetic instructions are injected into the arm, the muscle cells translate them into a viral protein directly in the body. This preview gives the immune system time to design powerful antibodies that can neutralize the real virus if the individual is ever infected. AstraZeneca's DNA vaccine 
is very similar, but there's a few critical steps that happen before arriving at the mRNA. This vaccine contains an adenovirus modified with the DNA of the COVID-19 spike protein. Adenoviruses are common viruses that typically cause things like cold or flu-like symptoms. Scientists used a chimpanzee adenovirus, which can enter human cells but can't replicate inside them. After the vaccine is injected into the person's arm, the adenovirus enters the cell and travels to the nucleus. Once inside the nucleus, the adenovirus drops off its artificially modified DNA encoding the COVID-19 spike protein. This DNA can be read by the cell and copied into mRNA. Generation of an immune response then follows that of mRNA vaccines that we just discussed. All this talk about injecting DNA, mRNA into your body may have you worried. Is your DNA being altered permanently? Well, not quite. While these mRNA and DNA vaccines do contain genetic material, the information they hold cannot be transferred into your own DNA, and therefore, the, the information cannot be transferred to the next generation. While these vaccines represent a potential solution to the ongoing pandemic, we'll only return to some form of normalcy once the majority of the population gets vaccinated. So until you get vaccinated, please wear a mask, stay home, stay safe. Thanks guys, see you next time.